Hi, I'm Tam. And I'm Bobby. And welcome to our adventures. It's Tuesday morning, and we are at breakfast again. They've got us against the wall with these pretty pictures of Savannah. And um, oh, with orange juice, and coffee, and so I just don't have our water. Pam got the French toast casserole with some fruit. I went old school, scrambled eggs, hot sauce, uh, homestyle potatoes, bacon, and some grits. That's what we're having for breakfast. Our road trip in today to Fort Pulaski National Monument. And uh, it's a, only about a 20 minute drive, so we'll go explore that this morning. You're at the stop sign, mate. It's Bull River, apparently. And you can see the Savannah Inlet coming up. You see a big uh, container ship in there. Oh, we can't see it on the GoPro. I'll have to zoom in. Fort Pulaski National Monument is located on Cockspur Island between Savannah and Tybee Island in Georgia. Fort Pulaski, credit cards only. And it's $10 a person. It wasn't a bad drive. Very pretty. In some areas. Not so pretty in others. I mean, the, the little meandering bay was cool, but there was one spot where they have like, like everyone's got their own dock and it just littered. It looks like really trashy, littered with docks everywhere. But overall it was pretty. We just went to the visitor center, saw a little introductory movie, and we're going to go explore Fort Pulaski. It preserves Fort Pulaski, the place where the Union Army successfully tested rifled cannons in combat during the American Civil War in 1862 the success of which rendered brick fortifications obsolete. The fort was also used as a prisoner of war camp. Crossing the moat. We are we are in Fort Polanski. Okay. Nice and cool in here. It's very well leaked. It is great. It wouldn't have been in the day. <laughs> Boo, you can't see me because you've got the right way around. Turn it off. This is a little island before the proper fort, I guess. This is the fort fort. So this was the berm area with the storage. This is the fort proper. It's full from enough water. The National Monument includes most of Cockspur Island containing the fort and all of the adjacent McQueen's Island. After the War of 1812, U.S. President James Madison ordered a new system of coastal fortifications to protect the United States from a foreign invasion. 
construction of the fort to protect the Port of Savannah began in 1829 under the direction of Major General Babcock and later 2nd Lieutenant Robert E. Lee, a recent graduate of West Point. Cistern is catching the water. We hold 200,000 gallons of fresh water. The new fort would be on Cockspur Island at the mouth of the Savannah River. In 1833, the facility was named Fort Pulaski in honour of Casimir Pulaski, a Polish soldier and military commander who fought during the American Revolution under the command of George Washington. Pulaski was a noted cavalryman, played a large role in training revolutionary troops and took parts in sieges at Charleston and Savannah. Olmsted surrendered in this room April 11, 1862. My dear wife, I address you under circumstances of the most painful nature. Fort Pulaski has fallen and the whole garrison of prisoners. Charles Ong said April 11, 1862. At just 25 years old, Charge H. Olmsted had been in command of Fort Pulaski a little over a month before the Union Army arrived on Tybee Island. The Savannah native Olmsted knew the importance of Fort Pulaski and keeping the river open. When on the morning of April 10, 1862, Word arrived that the Union Army was demanding the surrender of the fort. We could give but one answer that I was there to fight, not to yield. Which he yielded. He yielded. He he yielded. yielded. 30, 30, 30 hours. Fort Pulaski belonged to what is known as the third system of coastal fortifications, which were characterized by greater structural durability than earlier works. Most of the nearly 30 third system forts built after 1816 still exist along the Atlantic and Gulf coasts. I see too much in here. Wood pilings were sunk up to 70 feet into the mud to support an estimated 25 million bricks. Fort Pulaski was finally completed in 1847 after 18 years of construction and nearly 1 million in construction costs. The walls were 11 feet thick and were thought to be impenetrable except by only the largest land artillery. The smooth bore cannon of the time had a range of only about half a mile and the nearest land, Tybee Island, was much further away than that. It was assumed that the fort would be invincible to enemy attack. What do we have turn radius? Yeah, pretty good turn radius. In reference to the fort's strength, United States Chief of Engineers General Totten remarked that you might as well bombard the Rocky Mountains. Though completed in 1847, Fort Polanski was under the control of only two caretakers until 1860, when South Carolina seceded from the United States and set in motion the Civil War. Good shoot. Like they're shooting, there's that mound is obviously later on because yeah. So they're shooting at the mound there. That's an additional. Anybody trying to get across the moat and get gunned down? Georgia Governor Joseph E. Brown ordered Fort Pulaski to be taken by his state. Can you find the fall print? Yes. A steamship carrying 110 men from Savannah traveled downriver and the fort was seized by the state. In the end of the 19th century, a fire swept through this corner of the fort and destroyed many of the original floorboards. When the fort was undergoing restoration, it was decided to leave this corner uncovered, so some of the foundations of the fort could be seen. What you see before you is a top layer of foundation. Notice how the arches visible up above continue all the way around to beneath the flooring. This is called a reverse arch. It provides extra strength to the fort. Wherever you walk on wooden floorboards in the fort, this is what you are walking over. That's cool. After the secession of Georgia in February 1861, the state joined the Confederate States of America, and Confederate troops moved into the fort. Commissary. Um, 
Eight Confederate officers who had been held as prisoners of war, of, of war at Fall for last year since October had spent weeks carefully shoving the hole through the bricks below the floorboards of the casement. <laughs> last night, some of the Confederate officers attempted a skillful but unsuccessful escape by working an old vent hole in the subterranean chambers they dug through another vent into the commissary's casement, then by a rope dropped into a ditch and swam the moat and eluded the sentries under cover of a dense fog. They found the boats all guarded and were all recaptured. Eight attempted it. Thin men who could squeeze through the holes. In consequence of this, I have taken additional precautions and keep guard among them constantly and their quarters are visited daily and nightly every 15 minutes by an officer. Hmm. By December 1861, Tybee Island was thought to be too isolated and unprepared for conflict, and so was abandoned by Confederate forces. For my duty, some soldiers played baseball on the restored parade ground. This allowed Union troops to gain a foothold across the Savannah River from Fort Pulaski. Union forces under Quincy Gilmore began constructing batteries along the beaches of Tybee Island. On the morning of April 10, 1862, Union forces asked for the surrender of the fort to prevent needless loss of life. Colonel Charles Olmsted, commander of the Confederate garrison, rejected that offer. Confederate prisoners of war. I wasn't a Confederate, but I found out a hussy was. Fort Pulaski was prepared for a possible infantry attack, but it never endured a direct land assault. Using 36 guns, including the new James Rifle Cannon and Parrot Rifles, Union troops began the long bombardment of Fort Pulaski. Upskirt. Upskirt. Maryland action. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take this slow. Because beat the stairs. Just do one step at a time. One foot at a time. At least there's a wall to hold on to, not like the leaves and my end. My end ruins. Within 30 hours, the new rifled cannon had breached one of the fort's corner walls. The rifled projectiles could be accurately fired farther, up to four to five miles, than the larger and heavier smoothbore cannonballs. Shells now passed through the fort dangerously close to the main powder magazine. Reluctantly, Colonel Olmsted surrendered the fort. Only two soldiers, one Confederate and one Union, were killed in the attack. Olmsted's decision to surrender haunted him for decades. Up on the top wall, there's like the cannonballs come through. I know. On the other side. Gilmore succeeded almost entirely because of his rifled cannon, which caused massive damage in the walls of the fort. Gilmore's triumph won him a promotion from engineer captain to brigadier general. Within six weeks of the surrender, Union forces repaired the fort, and all shipping into and out of Savannah ceased. It says Atlantic Ocean, Tidy Island, Hilton Head Island is over there. That's the North Channel. Savannah is back that way. 
listen to the North Channel now is when they use Pennsylvania. They no longer use the South Channel. Christopher Hussey. The loss of Savannah as a viable Confederate port crippled its war effort. With the fort securely in Union control, General David Hunter, commander of the Union garrison, issued General Order No. 7, which stated that all slaves in Florida, Georgia and South Carolina were now free. Good the North Channel. Hey. Good view the North Channel. So, um... President Abraham Lincoln quickly rescinded the order, but later issued his own Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. Fort Pulaski was made a final destination on the Underground Railroad as slaves throughout the area were freed upon their arrival to Cockspur Island. By the turn of the 20th century, the fort began to fall into disrepair. Not very far from Savannah to Hilton Head. Hilton has the big marina, isn't it? Yeah. Where people go on the well, loop. Yeah. In an effort to save the old fort, the War Department finally declared Fort Pulaski a national monument on October 15, 1924, by presidential proclamation of Calvin Coolidge. The monument was transferred from the War Department to the National Park Service on August 10, 1933. Repairs were then started and members of the Civilian Conservation Corps arrived on Coxburg Island and began rehabilitation of the fort. Heading back towards the car, leaving Fort Pulaski. The old lighthouse, that looks like the crown on the top. You don't get to go to the lighthouse in the lighthouse. No, can't go to the lighthouse. Sweaty. Well, we just got back from Fort Pulaski. We're sweaty. In, in the car, we're very sweaty. Got the air conditioning running, we're cooling down. We're gonna have our snack, chippies. And then we're gonna head back, I think, probably towards Savannah. Yeah. And uh, see what happens. So left at the lighthouse. At the historic Tybee Island Lighthouse. What's that? Dragonfly. Cool. And the moon. Yep. So we're doing a kind of extended our drive about just to kind of see what's here. We're at the Marshall House again. It's at wine time. We're real close. They came over and put the big chill on the record player. You don't see that often, do you? You don't often see the record on a record player. Yep. It's wine o'clock. And supposedly tonight is trivia night. So we'll see how that goes. We like trivia normally. Yeah, but what sort of trivia is it? Yeah, what kind of is trivia? Is it Georgian trivia? Because I ain't gonna yeah, go Yeah, we're gonna do well on Georgia trivia. Maybe they're gonna try and remember Give us, ask us questions on what the guy last night talked to told us. I don't remember that. But... You remember a lot of that. Trivia yeah. night. And then we have one or two Georgia questions mixed in with, you know, pop culture. I mix it all up. It's not all about Savannah in Georgia. That's just boring to me. I've been here all my life out here. But <laughs> yeah. well, in, in any case, we're going to have fun tonight. Um, don't worry about your wine glasses. I'm a pusher. I will make sure that your wine glasses are filled. This is a judgment free zone. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. You're on vacation. Before we get started, I want to quickly go through the team names. Feel free to cheer for yourself, clap, motivate, whatever it is that you need to do to feel good about winning this game. All right, our 
first team by 1565. <laughs> <laughs> I like your enthusiasm. Thank you so much. All right, up uh, next is Team Three, Three, Three. Right? Right. Australia? Yeah. Okay. Next, we have Team Alien Grandparents right here on the couch. Let's give it up for them. Yeah. We've got Team Sweet in the house over here in the corner. Welcome, guys. Up next is Team Dunk Rivals right here on the couch. Next is Team Muju right here at the chess table. And the team that I think is going to win is the best over here. <laughs> if they're from Boston and they hate and they brain me, I'm better not gonna win. All right, now the first question is true or false. The unicorn is the national animal of Scott. True or false? <laughs> this is the famous chat we've heard so much about from Pam. How is it? Good. So the chat's really good. We ate like half of it and we decided we probably should wait for the non bread to show up. So yeah. we keep telling ourselves we're waiting. We're waiting. Is that working well? <laughs> the tikka. That's um, the cheese tikka. Cheese tikka. It's, um, Fried cheese. Cool. We have an order of non. Still coming. It'll be here shortly. So I had the non vegan platter, which is basically chicken three ways. <laughs> hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe to our channel, it would mean a lot to us.